Hey, what's up guys? Jeremiah here. I'm up my stepdad's farm and he's down there mowing the hayfield. I'm gonna take the DJI Spark up today and try to get some good video of him with Active Track so I can show you guys how good it works. Try to fly it around him a little bit and try to see what kind of footage we can get out of it. So let's get it up in the air, guys. Hey. All right, guys, so I just took off and I'm gonna go ahead and fly over here to where he's cutting. Gonna go ahead into active track mode. And it says the camera settings are adjusted to active track and cannot track subject because it cannot identify subject. Now I'm not sure why it won't identify the subject. In my opinion, I would think that it's big enough. Maybe the green on green is uh, causing it maybe not to be able to sense it good enough. So once it gets up in here where he already cut, it still says cannot track. And at this point, I would think it would definitely should pick it up and track it, no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and fly in a little bit closer. There we go. And start the tracking. Now I'm going to switch here. This is the actual footage from the drone with a little bit of color grading done. And I got the screenshot of my iPhone in the lower right hand corner. You can see that the tracking is holding well. The um, the cameras staying locked on the tractor pretty good. And obviously I I assumed it would. This is uh, he's traveling fairly slow at six mile an hour or so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pan around as he's cutting with the sticks on the controller. The gimbal's still holding strong on the tractor. Still has a pretty good lock, keeping him in the center of the frame. I'm go gonna go ahead and pan back the other way. And you'll see here I'm getting a little bit close to the ground. I'm 10 foot from the ground. And this is using the vision sensors underneath the drone to sense this. You'll know that by the two lines next to your height. Height. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link above to a video that I made. It explains exactly how those sensors work and how to read that reading. So go ahead and check that out guys if you're not sure about that. So I'm still controlling it with the sticks here. I'm going to go ahead and pan around him again. And I moved in a little bit closer to him. And you'll see here it lost tracking there. And I turned the drone manually right there. I'll go into the phone view here and show you guys exactly what happened here. You'll see it was holding pretty good there, and then once I got to about here, it lost it. And then I turned it manually there. It picked him right back up again, no problem, and I was able to lock it on again. But I don't know why it lost him to begin with, because I didn't think I was that close. Right, so let's just go ahead and pan around him a little bit more, show you guys a little bit more of how it works. And keep watching until the end, guys, because something happens at the end that actually kind of got me a little nervous there at the end. I lost signal at one point as I was panning in front of him and I wasn't sure if the tractor was going to run into the drone or not. And I'll show you guys that here at the very end. Okay, still tracking him pretty good here. And if I would just let the drone do all the tracking and not be controlling it, panning around it, I'm sure it would stay locked on. There it is again that I lost him when I was panning. And I'm sure it would stay locked on, but to me that footage of just staying in one spot is kind of boring. So I like panning around and moving around as I'm filming. And here you guys can see that it keeps saying that it's too small, get closer, and it few times it said that I was too low to the ground. It says the aircraft is too low and it wouldn't start tracking until I was at least six feet up. Now it was saying that even though I was about 25 feet from the ground or so it was reading in negative feet because I was lower than my takeoff point 
I probably could have came down some till those sensors underneath the drone picked up around 23 feet or so and then it probably would have let me lock on to them but while I was in that negative uh, altitude right there it would not let me lock on until I got above six feet so keep that in mind guys if it won't lock on and you're in the negative feet you can always go down until the sensors pick up the ground height then it'll let you lock on to the subject All right, now here he is on the old case, spreading it out so it can dry. And I'm going to show you guys here why I got nervous. I come down and I started panning in front of him, and then I lost signal, and I thought he was going to run into the drone with the tractor. I'm going to show you guys here a live feed from the phone itself as I was flying, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Then I start panning around here, and as I'm coming around, I lose signal and the screen cuts out and goes complete black. When it comes on again, he's right in front of the drone and he's gaining on it, and I thought he was going to crash into it at this point. Then it cut in and out a few more times, got a little choppy, and then it showed up again right behind the hay tether. Battery and I was super low. nervous. The aircraft will go to the home point. Then the battery's low, so I went ahead and flew it home. I just got done doing the active track with the DJI Spark and it did fairly well. I mean it is a large open field with nothing else there so I figured it would do a good job. The only issue I had was it initiating the uh, initial tracking because it said I was too low. Even though I was up a good height but because I was lower than my takeoff point it was reading a negative feet and it wouldn't start active tracking until I got over like 15 feet. I was still able to use the sticks to control the drone while he while it was in active track which was really nice. It did lose him a few times but uh, overall it did a great job and like I said it was in an open field with a large object so I knew it would do good. For those of you that are thinking about getting a new Mavic 2, comment below let me know which one you guys are going to get and why because I'm still undecided. So if you like this video guys please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already done so please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.